I will first do a breakdown of what this Bible passage is saying. I will try to break into four uh, sentences, if you like, uh, categorizes. I will categorize it into four uh, categories. Uh, this way, it will be easy for us to focus on the meat of the of the of the message we are being presented with, and to really go in depth in studying and understanding what the Bible is teaching us, or what the Bible wants us to understand, even regarding this Bible passage, because the Bible admonishes us to study and to be approved to God Almighty. As workman, who does not need to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. That is the word of God. And we need to do that on this program every time we come together. We don't miss what when it comes to going to the word of God, bringing out what the Holy Spirit is teaching us, and the way it is that the grace of God will share with you without looking at maybe some people will be offended, or some people will be, think, will be thinking, oh, that's too harsh. Well, if you are here on this program, we don't try to use any word of God to attack anybody because the word of God is pure by itself. If you open your heart and you receive the word of God, it will be a blessing unto your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, uh, like I said, it will be grouped into four categories. So, the first one, and this area, these are, these are called areas of concentration. The other idea is for us to be able to delve, you know, in it and understand the passage so that it can be of the greatest benefits that we can have to us. The first one I have is this, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those who have been saved, it is the power of God. That is verse 18. Remember, we are reading from verse 18 to 21. What this means? literally speaking, is that the preaching of the gospel of, the, of Jesus Christ is laughable, ridiculous, and unreasonable. In the understanding or sight of those people, the devil has put wind to go to hell. But to those who have been proud, those who have come unto, unto, unto the Lord Jesus Christ, who have been brought into his marvelous light, it is the power of God. It is the power of God. It is the victory they have in God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? The Bible says, explaining this, looking at the meaning I just explained to you, the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, that the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. You see, going by that meaning I just explained to you, that the preaching of the gospel to some people, whose that are having, is ridiculous, it's laughable. In fact, it's one of those things they see as, why are you bringing this to me again? They're just disturbing my peace. <laughs> that is the way it appears to them. The Bible says, in the book of Romans chapter 8, I'm going to read from verse 5 to 8. The Bible says, For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is empty against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Nor indeed can be. So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So you see why people generally, when they hear you're preaching the gospel, some of them are immediately they turn off. They don't want to even understand. Some of them are courteous enough to say, okay, yeah, let me hear what you have to say. But in all honesty, they just want you to, you know, to talk. And then, because they already have their minds made up. So when you finish what you're saying, 
uh, they will say, well, thank you, I'll consider it. They're not considering anything. See what the Bible has to say about them. It's because their mind is set on the things of this world. And all it brings to anybody is death. It's death. That's what it brings. See, the word of God can never in any way be diminished. The word of God can never in any way be made to mean what it does not mean if you are sincere. Because if you make the word of God to mean what it does not really mean, there's a verse, or there are some verses for you in the scripture that tell you what your portion will be. So, what the word of God is saying is what we have to tell you that if you refuse because of the hardness of your heart, because you, depart, you despise the word of God, or rather you despise maybe the messenger of the word of God, the truth is you have chosen the path of death. And that part of death, I'm not talking about physical death alone. I'm talking about eternal death. That is the separation from God Almighty Himself for all of eternity. And I pray that will not be your portion today in the name of Jesus. That will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. That is my prayer for you. Amen? Amen. Now, the second category I group it into, this is verse 19. It says, for it is written, just li listen to me carefully, please. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Then the other part of it, which is verse 20, says, Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? You know what I mean? Because of people's heart disobedience. Because people have chosen to go their own way. God, in his infinite knowledge, has taken away the ability to understand spiritually important words or statements. He has done this in his own wisdom. Because these people, they think they are smart. They think they know too much that the word of God will not add anything unto them. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, the Bible says, But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. She shine on them. You see, the word, of God, the word of God is clear. The word of God explains everything you may have on your mind if you have not received the Lord Jesus Christ into your life. The word of God has everything that you may want to think of in your finite mind to explain why you don't want to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's just so unfortunate that without the interpretation of the Holy Spirit, you read the Bible, you, you may not understand or grasp anything that the Bible is saying because it is the sweet Holy Spirit himself who gives us understanding, the spiritual understanding of what you need to know. So I want to encourage you, if you already found the narrow path, please keep on moving. The Lord God Almighty Himself will strengthen you. But if there are people among us or people watching me, listening to me, who are here to know the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to advise you in the same way that the door is open for you today to come in to the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. He will save you. He will. Because He saved me. He saved so many other people that are listening to me today who are in the narrow path and they are walking on that narrow path by the help of the Holy Spirit. You see, the Bible says in Proverbs 14, 16, A wise man fears and departs from evil, but a fool rages and is self-confident. I want to advise you, 
do not be wise in your own hearts. Heaven is real. Hell is also real. Heaven is real. Hell is also real. Choose wisely. The Bible says in the, in the book of Proverbs, this in uh, chapter 14, verse 14, see, a backslider in heart will be filled with his own ways, but a good man will be satisfied from there, from above. A good man will be satisfied from above. Are you letting the word of God that I'm preaching to you into your heart to receive satisfaction? Or you want to remain filled with your own way? I pray you will choose wisely today in the name of Jesus. Now, let me go into my explanation using what happened in the scriptures, especially way back to the Old Testament now. During the time of our prophet Isaiah, the great prophet Isaiah, you know, he was called at the time when there was high prosperity, if you will, in the northern, I mean, in the southern kingdom, Judah. He was a major prophet. God called him and God sent him to go and warn the people. But see what happened when God called him. Because people's hearts were hardened, just the way a lot of people are hardening their hearts today. And he said, go and tell these people. This was God Almighty speaking. Keep on hearing. Do not understand. Keep on seeing. But do not perceive. Make the hearts of these people dull. And their ears heavy. And shut their hearts. Lest they see with their hearts. And hear with their, and hear with their ears. And understand with their hearts. And return and be healed. Can you imagine? This is not a joke. When God has put up with a man or a woman for so long a time so that their, say, uh, their soul can be saved. And they say to God Almighty, you know what? I'd rather go my own way. There comes a time that God will give up on such a person. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, God himself said, my spirit will not continue to strive with, with, with men. There comes a time, there comes a threshold, you can call it a cut of line, when God Almighty will give up on somebody. May God not give up on you in the mighty name of Jesus. Because why? God has done all he has to do. He has done everything he has to do. For us to receive the free gift of life in the person of his only begotten son. Let me ask you. Going further on this, you know why God who came in human form and we call him Jesus Christ? Why he spoke in parable in the gospel? It is so because he passed a judgment on those people. Who knew who he was? But because of the hardness of their hearts, they refused him anyway. They did. See what the Bible says. From the book of Mark, chapter 4, verses 10 and 12, it says, But when he was alone, this was talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, those around him, with the twelve, asked him about the parable. And he said to them, To you it has been given to know the mystery, of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, all things come in parables, so that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand. Let they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. You see, people will say, not said. <laughs> I believe even within a short period of time, I started this. Uh, Simon, I believe I've said enough to let you know that God is all massive. God is all gracious. God is 
wonderfully benevolent. It's God who can give and give and give and give and give. But I tell you, there's a line you don't cross with God Almighty. You don't, because if you do, it leads to eternal regret. And I pray, if you are under the voice, if you are under my, if you are my, my the, this message that you are listening to me, I pray you will not fall into the category of those people who have been given up to follow their minds for destruction in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, what do you call the spiritual implication of this? What do you think this actually means to us spiritually? Um, especially to those people who are refusing the knowledge of God, who are saying, well, they will go their own way. It doesn't matter because they enjoy their lives as they are. It means if they continue, like I said, the hand thereof is the way of death. It is the way of death, the Bible says. So please consider your way. Have a turnaround. Consider what is being said to you this day. And let the light of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ shine upon your heart. And let this word that is being preached to you today mix with faith in your heart. And you turn your way and receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your life. Amen? Amen. Now, the fourth category of the Bible passage we're dealing with. Remember I said I, I broke it down to four chunks for us to be able to deal with this. In depth. And to be able to understand what the Lord is saying to us. It says, For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. What this simply means is this. The wisdom of this world sees the gospel as meant for people who are weak or not smart enough. To understand how to make it in the way that is quote unquote smart. But unbeknown to them, I mean to these earth dwellers, world dwellers, God has chosen, chosen the humble way to exalt those whose heart arrive to receive the, the divine gift of salvation. Let me quote this Bible passage to those people who are here, especially. Who are yet to know the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible has explanation for all your thoughts. Everything going on, the Bible has explanation. You only need to receive and then you will see what the Bible is saying concerning your situation. But God has chosen, this is really from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter, Steve chapter 1. I will read verses 27 uh, to 29. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the best things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not, God has chosen to bring to nothing the things that hurt that no flesh should glory in his presence. Did you, did you hear that? What the Bible is saying is, God has chosen to present that greatest gift to mankind in such a way that if anybody will come to him, nobody will be able to say, I hand it, I was worth it, I worked for it. That is bringing down the pride in the heart of man. I believe that was what God did. So that the, the field will be plain. It will be level for everyone. Because the Bible says, To the humble, God has given grace. But he resists the proud. Nobody can stand before God Almighty and beat his or her chest. To say, I am this, I am that. Because everyone is supposed to come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ by faith under the grace that the Lord God Almighty has provided. 
So it's nothing of your own. It's a free gift. So God, in his infinite wisdom, has packaged this gift in such a way that if your heart is wicked, for your information, you will not be able to receive the message of life that is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if your heart is ready to receive, your heart is not wicked. The gift will be given to you and you will reign with the King of Glory himself for all of eternity. Let me give you a real life example of a man whose foolishness really amazed me in his writing. I was reading his article where years ago and I copied just a portion of it, what he wrote. Uh, I call him my P. That's not a full name. Hear me. Hear what he wrote. He said, religion is indeed for those that can be considered weak-minded. He said he did some research into the subject and found that religion in general is a method in which people find explanation into what into that which they cannot explain. People's inability to come to a logical, cognitive appraisal of life events find it easier to attribute this event to an omnipotent mythical power. This also helps them in times of maladaptive cognitive appraisal of certain situations. Religious people tend to display a diminished or complete lack of common sense. Critical thinking, skills, logic, etc. He kept ranting on. I'll stop writing. You see, I know that his viewpoint, but you know, he failed woefully by calling Christianity a religion. He classified, he defined Christianity as a religion. In a way, I would have given him more credit if indeed he was able to differentiate between what a religion is and what being a Christian is, that is, what is Christianity. He didn't get it at all. So from the outset, from the beginning of his write-up, he failed woefully because what he wrote may be true of religious people. Here we are not talking about being religious. We are talking about being in Christ the Lord Jesus Christ. Having relationship with God Almighty Himself. That's what we are talking about. So you can see what the Bible is talking about. That indeed, man is so foolish to the extent that they think what they know at which that of God Almighty. The Bible says the foolishness of God is wiser than man. Please understand this. And it says, even the weakness of God is stronger than man. Please don't try to look at the word of God and want to uh, explain it with your own finite mind. It has not been given to you. The word of God is divine. It's deep. So we need to understand that for people like Mark, I call him my pig, you see, the Bible has one passage for them, among many others. I find this also in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verses 18 to 20. See what the Bible says. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool, that he may become wise. For the wisdom of God, or, I, mean, I mean, for the wisdom of this world, is foolishness with God. For it is written, it catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are futile. <laughs> what does this mean, spiritually speaking? God has not given it to human mind to understand spiritual matters, except the heart is yielded to Him. That is it. It has not been given to us, except your heart is yielded. You allow, because the light of the gospel to shine upon your heart, then 
you're going to have a comprehension of what it means to know the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the, in the same book of 1 Corinthians, it says, the Jew, they seek and they're looking for signs, looking for things that will make them confirm, yeah, truly, this is God. And it talks about the Gentiles. This is talking about those, all other groups, apart the Jews, apart from the Jews, that they seek after wisdom. But God be praised. We preach Jesus Christ crucified. Nothing like looking for signs, nothing like looking for wisdom. Because we're preaching Jesus crucified. And this to the Jew is what? Stumbling block. Because they're looking for signs. And to the Gentiles, all other groups, it's foolishness. It's foolishness. The Bible says, to those who are called, who are saved, you know what it is? Christ is both the wisdom and the power of God. That is saying, both what the Jews and the Gentiles are looking for, they are encapsulated in the Lord Jesus Christ himself. That is the victory we have. Through the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for us on that cross at Calvary. Amen. So in bringing my message home today, the Bible passage that we have dealt with means this to those people who are yet to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, don't be wise in your own eyes. If you are seen, yet to come to the Lord Jesus Christ. For all your mockery of his way to save, your superfluous knowledge of this world and what it offers, and even your procrastination cannot stand before the all-wise, all-knowing, and the holy God. Make your heart simple to receive Jesus and be saved from destruction. The other thing that this passage is saying to those people who are here to know the Lord, God says what he means, and he means what he says. He has opened up the gateway of life to mankind through his only begotten son of love, and whoever rejects him rejects life. That is the message for you. That is the message for all who have refused each other to open their hearts. That is the message for you, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And I will raise him up the last day. That's the word of God. The Bible says, in the book of Romans chapter 10, I think I'll read from verse 29 to 10. Oh, Romans chapter 8 this time, not, verse, not, not chapter 10. He said, For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, who he predestined, this he also called. Whom he called, this he also justified, and whom he justified, he has also glorified. <laughs> Whoever comes to Jesus, to the Lord Jesus Christ, fulfills this scripture that I've just quoted. Those theories that people go about, some people have been predestined, uh, some other people will never know God, this is the way it will be. Jesus died for the sin of the whole world, the Bible says. Whoever comes to him, receive that free gift of life. That's what the Bible says. Nothing will hinder you if your heart is open. Nothing will hinder you to receive that gift. So, if you come to the Lord Jesus Christ today, you are fulfilling that, that scripture. That means you have been predestined to come. That's the word of God. God Almighty will not learn anything. That is the mystery 
behind that Bible passage. And we can't go into it because I don't even have the ability to preach that. But by the Spirit of God in me, I can tell you, it's deeper than what we can explain. When God is saying, I know, I'm God Almighty. This is quoted in the book of Isaiah, chapter 46, verses 9 and 10. God Almighty speaks. That is God Almighty. He speaks ahead of time. And he tells you that whatever he speaks comes to pass. That is the true text of who God is. He has declared it, he has declared that's the way it will be. So if you open your heart and come to the Lord today, you are among those people who have been predestined to be saved. Amen? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe from your heart that the Lord raised him up from the dead, from the dead, you will be saved. For with your heart you believe unto righteousness, and with your mouth you confess unto salvation. The scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Can you hear that? Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. And the Bible in that passage says, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, can you tell me anything differentiating a group of people from being saved and others not being saved? People, in their foolishness, they try to twist the word of God. I call upon you today. The door is open. His hands are stretched open to receive you. Please come. The Lord is waiting for you. So you can live with him for all of eternity. Will you give your life to him today? Please, I'm admonishing you. I'm encouraging you. Let the door of your heart be open. And let your life and your life be transformed. In Jesus' name. A link to a page on our website that we have especially prepared for your convenience will be showing at the bottom of the screen now. Please follow that link if you need further information about how to commit your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I tell you, you will never regret that you have done so in Jesus' name. Let us pray as I close the program. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you. Father, I bless you, for indeed you are good, and your mercy endures forever. Thank you for the gift of life through the Lord Jesus Christ. The life that you have given us, and it's life more abundantly. The life nobody can take anything from, and nobody can hide anything to. Is complete. We want to say thank you again for those people who are going to that page, Want to Know Jesus page on our website, who are deciding, even as I'm talking, to release their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, to be their Lord and to be their Savior. Father, I pray as they do so, that indeed they will receive that gift when they give themselves in the mighty name of Jesus and that which you alone can do all others who are already walking in that narrow path, Father, I pray for them that they will continue to press in, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray they will not become weary, even in the journey. I pray, Lord, you will strengthen them through your Holy Spirit that indeed when all is said and done and it's time to go home to reign with you with, uh, for all of eternity, we will hear that wonderful welcome from you, faithful and good servant. Welcome into the joy of the Lord. And so shall it be. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you again. God bless you. I will see you on this program next time. Until then, remain blessed. <laughs>
Jesus died for us all so we can have life. Come to him and receive life, believe on him and thirst no more. Good news reporting is all we do, seeing souls saved is our ministry, 